Welcome to Electron Online. Now here we have a very interesting problem, a test tube inside the centrifuge. And notice that the test tube is open to the atmosphere, so that we have atmospheric pressure at the very top, but what we're trying to figure out is as the test tube goes around the centrifuge very, very quickly at a very high omega, what is the pressure anywhere inside the test tube? So in, in essence, we have what we call artificial gravity. Now notice that normally the pressure inside a fluid, the pressure is equal to rho g times y, the density of the liquid times acceleration due to gravity times the depth inside the liquid. So in this case, the depth inside the liquid would be y from here on down further into the liquid. The density of the liquid is still density, but instead of g, which is a constant, g is now going to be created by the centripetal acceleration. So in this case, the pressure is equal to rho times the centripetal acceleration times g. Now notice that this here is not really g, it's a, it's a what we call a, a simulated gravity, but here g is a constant, the centripetal acceleration does depend upon the radius, and so therefore that is not a constant. Which means that if pressure is not a function of just the depth, but also a function of the centripetal acceleration, then what we need to do here is we need to say that a small change in the pressure is equal to the density times the centripetal acceleration times a small change in the y. So we're going to have to express it like this, and since we have to write the pressure as a differential, we're going to need to integrate. First, let's calculate the centripetal acceleration. So we know that a centripetal is equal to v squared over r. Now, when we go around in a circle, we know that v is equal to r times omega. So when we replace that, we can say the centripetal acceleration is equal to r squared omega squared divided by r, and that one of these r's cancels out, so the centripetal acceleration is equal to r times omega squared. Now, r and y are in the same direction, so what I can then do is I can write the differential dp as being equal to the density times, uh, instead, yeah, I can write r times omega squared times dr, so instead of dy, I'll write dr, which is the length in the direction of the test tube. r, of course, is the distance to any point in the test tube. Omega squared is the angular velocity squared and the density of the liquid. So now we have an expression for the differential of the pressure as you go in the test tube. So now what I need to do is, if I need to find the pressure at some point inside the test tube like that, I can then say that the pressure is equal to the integral of all the dps starting from r sub naught, which is where the liquid starts, to some point inside the liquid. Which means that this can be written as the integral from r sub naught. Ooh, and now one more thing. We can't forget that we have atmospheric pressure at the very beginning, so of course I need to add atmospheric pressure to that. There we go. That's a better way of writing it. So the pressure is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure plus the integral from the initial r to r of dp, which is the density, times r, times omega squared, times dr. And of course, I can pull some things out of the integral sign. So pressure equals the atmospheric pressure plus the density times omega squared times the integral of r dr from zero up from r sub naught to r, like that. And of course, that I can integrate. So the pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure plus density omega squared times r squared over 2 from r sub naught to r. And then if I write that out, I can say that the pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus 1 half the density omega squared times if I plug in the upper limit, I get r squared. Plug in the lower limit, I get r sub naught squared. And that is ultimately the pressure that we have inside the test tube caused by the rapid rotation. And notice pressure is not a constant in there, or I should say pressure is not a linear function of y. It is a function of both the centripetal acceleration and y. So we have to integrate to get that answer. And that 
has how it's done.